Hi, uh, welcome back, uh, Nana here. And then uh, is a special session on this uh, retain age and release. So we're going to see what exactly it is. So let us say uh, uh, there is a factory manager and then he has ordered for the renovation of the factory <coughs> for the, as a building construction, right? Yeah, building construction contractor is there to whom he has given it. So he is now going to charge 20,000 US dollars and then uh, uh, he will be completing the works. So once when the company, well, work is completed, uh, the, the person who is going to do, let us say uh, it is a PRC 15 dot student as a factory manager actually. And then this person will be basically uh, be retaining 20% of the payment actually. And then release only 16,000. And then he will now wait for six months and then see whether there are any damages to the uh, construction work or any repair is required, any modification is required. And then uh, all the things will be completed in about six months time. And then after the satisfactory completion of all activities, he'll be releasing the retain age after six months. So this is a very famous concept uh, in the industry as far as uh, the services are concerned, basically. Uh, mainly for services, uh, they will be retaining it. <clears throat> so the retaining will be uh, the retain will retain age will be happening now. So we are going to see the retain age now. Find how we are going to retain it, and then afterwards release the retain age. Actually. So let me go on the share my screen. Any doubts on the basic concept of uh, the retain age and release? No, no, one question here. Tell related me. to uh, yeah. it is uh, related to services. So it's a kind of uh, service implementation where you are capturing the retain age and the release. Yeah. So based on these service views, we are having a milestone based on line by. Yeah. Milestone payment, uh, I am meant to learn now. Right? Uh, there is a mile to milestone payment is called a progressive payment. And then it is also come, but I don't know how the documents. If you have any documents, please send it to me. I will learn that and then I will also teach them. Right? It's called a progressive payment, milestone payment. Like what happens if you are having a, you are now giving a contract to a, a what's called a builder. The builder has now laid the foundation and then you will now release 20% of the payment. Now he has completed the first floor and then you will now release another 30%. Likewise, upon every milestone, you are going to make a release of the payment. Right? So that is different from this retain age and release. Right? So that is also come, but uh, I don't have any document about uh, how to set it up. So if you have a document, please send it to me. So I will now set up, set that up and then I will now show it demo demonstrate. <clears throat> so here we are now going to see only retain age and release. Right? Retain age is basically what to check whether the activities which have been performed by the contractor is uh, satisfactory for you over a period of time. Say, for example, the six months actually. Any other doubts on the retain age and release? Good. We'll now go ahead and then we'll now see this. Okay. So let me share the screen. You're not going to go and then do it. So the first activity is to what? Create a document style actually. So document style is the first activity which you're going to create. We'll now go to the place and then you go to the FSM area, the functional setup manager area. Go there. From there, we will now go to the generic search area. Click on it and then you go to the search and then you now go to the generic search area. So here, I will now go to what? Manage document style. We are going to create our style for retain age actually. Click on it. Let me create my style now. If I click on plus one, I'm not going to create a style. <clears throat> I will now say Nana complex view. So I am now putting my own style. Thank you for the description. I will now make it as active. And then it is normally amount based. It will not be quantity based actually. It will be normally amount based. I remove the quantity and then it will make it amount. Based. We have already seen the consignment. When consignment has already been completed. OSP will be completed in manufacturing actually. Doing manufacturing alone. Make it all, you know, line time is basically all. And then the complex work, retain age, I am enabling it. Progressive payment is basically is not known to me. So if you happen to know uh, anything on this, on enable progressive payment, still know purchase order once enabled, we'll be able to uh, use a style to create amount based one. That's what this is now saying. So here, uh, progressive payment is uh, basically following an agreement actually. Fine. So here, the retainage will be following an, uh, on a purchase order. Actually. You see, amount based reason once enabled uh, and saved, it can be disabled also. That's what saying. Fine. That's okay. It's uh, is for the purchase orders. This is for the purchase order documents, and then this he is saying that it is an agreement based basically. I meant to learn that now. Right? So once when I learn it, if you have any documents on set it up, what happens again? Send it to me. So the purchase order is for retain age actually. I will not say <coughs> Nana's. Right? I will not say retain age PU. And give a meaningful name. So whatever the client wants it, what happens? You give a name on this now. Right? I am not enabling blanket right? for this now. And then uh, nothing is enabled. And then similarly, the CPA is also not enabled. Normally, you won't enable this. So we are now enabled everything and then made as active actually. 
So known as complex PO. So uh, the PO name is what? Known as retain HP. That's it. Well, that's the concept of close. That's it. So we are now completed. So we are now completed creating a style for the retain HP. And then if you go there and then try to create a purchase order, you will now be able to see our known as retain HP will be coming up on this place. So go to the home icon. <clears throat> and then you go there. So I will now go to the procurement. So let me go to the procurement. <clears throat> Uh, and then go to the purchase orders. Go to the purchase orders. And then when I want to create an order, I want to create an order. I click on create order. I can very well use the Nana's PO. On as written HPO, I can drop it down. You can use Nana's written HPO. So this way you can do it. I'm going to get it. So before I create the purchase order, uh, as we have seen in the procurement entirely, the charge account plays a very vital role. Right? So the employee's charge account has to be charged. Now, let us say PRC 15 is a factory manager who is now who is going to who is requesting for the services actually. So let us go there and then set up his charge account. Let up his expense account as a charge account. Go to this place. I go to the my client groups and then I go to the person management. Let me query PRC 15. PRC 10 is a purchase officer. Then PRC 15 is a requester who is asking for this uh, services actually. I will not say student, comma, PRC 15. PRC 15. So student comma last name comma space first name. So click on search now. You want to search for it. So you'll now search for this now, 15th employee. And then that we will be setting it. But click on it. We'll now click on the hyperlink on this and then go inside. And then we are going to make a date now. <clears throat> so we'll be editing it. And then we will now add. Whenever you're doing it, you go to what? You do not do not use a what happens? If you go to the edit. And then click on update. There are two options that are available. One is an add assignment, and then one is an uh, as assignment change. Please use this now. Fine. Do not use this. Fine. Use the assignment change on the HRML activity. You know Action reason is not mandatory. Fine. Uh, you can just leave it as such now. It is an assignment change. Click on OK. And then go down. And then we are going to change the charge account. Now. We go down. So we accepted the employment now. We are in this place on the HRMS. And then we are going to give what? the charge account, the expense account, which the employee is going to be. So whenever this employee is making a requisition right, or he wants a material or services, it will be charged against his account. So later on, management will be able to see how much of money of uh, worth of uh, what happens, uh, uh, requisitions have come from this employee. So go there, you want it. No, go down and then go to the expense. So we have one account here now. Fine. I will now replace it. I have one more account. Fine. It is now 60501 now. Fine. Go there. I have one expense account, default expense account there. Let me charge this now. Fine. So it is a 60540. Fine. Let me put it as a as my default charge account. 60540. Fine. Take off it. And then 120. 101, 60540, 120 the one. Go there. I will now make a change on this. Go there. I will now change it. So we have every employee will be given a what's called a management will be giving an account so that what happens they can monitor the expenses because the purpose of procurement module is to what reduce or optimize the spend spend optimization and spend reduction is the ultimate ultimate aim actually so by seeing the spends they can even advise the individual this man may be a big man so they may not be able to even advise also but in that case what happens uh, we have seen about how to use the preferred accounts for this now so I have not done it and click on save now. And then click on review and then submit. Say review and submit are the three activities which you have to do on the HRMS side now. So once you do it, everything will be coming up over you know. <clears throat> so click on OK and then review and then submit. So in the review part, you'll be able to see the change which has been happened on the uh, what's called on the account side, on the expense account. This is it a charge is, account, sir. Huh? The expense account, is, account. Yeah, it will be a charge account as well as the variance account also. Charge and variance yes. are exactly the same as far as the expense is concerned. Okay. Oh, okay. So go there. So the default expense account has been changed to 6054 So that's it. Fine. Go there. So there's a change on this one. All the thing, all the change, all the proposed values are also shown. You know, <clears throat> go down and then click on submit by which the changes now happen for the PRC 15. And this guy is need, need of it. Request is submitted. Now let us go ahead and then create a purchase order. Then go there. So the request is submitted. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and then create a purchase order for this. So we are going to make a purchase order for the retain age. So the request is submitted when get like a hand. Now you go there, go to the home account, click on close and then home it, go there. We'll now go and then create a purchase order for this. Click on it. Let us now create a purchase order for this. Go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders. And then let us now create a retain age purchase order. So click on create order. 
So our stale has got a retail reach and drop it down. I will now choose my analysis retail reach time. So this is the one. So this is a BU, find procurement BU and requisition BU. Supplier, I will now put JTEN underscore <coughs> sub one. I already created one supplier, ready made. So go there. So the supplier. And then uh, the supplier is also logged in inside. This is, our, this is where he has logged in. And then in the supplier portal, upon approval, you can now see this. And you'll be able to see this also. <coughs> go there. So I will now sign in again. <coughs> Signed up, and then here we'll be able to see it. So we'll now go there and I click on it and then put it and I click on create. In the retail HP, we are going to get the complete. Is amount based, and so it will be coming as what the line tape will be coming as fixed prices and services. So go there. And then the build location is Seattle, and then the default location is also fine. This is a place where the supplier is going to perform the work actually. So you can put all the same command there. So everything is done now. Right? So this you can also change. If you want to do the supplier to sub, uh, do the activity on a different location, you can also change it. If you want to go there. And then here, you go there, go to the place, whatever, I'm not going to add a line. If I can go to the lines area, and then let me add a line. So you click on plus. It will be fixed prices and settings. It's amount based one. So it, since it is amount based, it automatically comes to what? Fixed prices and settings. Fixed prices and settings. That's what. And then go there, click on it. I'll now say, <clears throat> Factory. Uh, so this is the one. So factory uh, renovation. Factory renovation is the one. And then category is a must. Right? Whenever you're having a fixed price service, the category is a must. I will not put a category of miscellaneous. In reality, I have to put the appropriate category. And then the base price is 20,000. And then I'm going to introduce the re re retailing. So the retailing. Yeah. Uh, you have not uh, entered any retainage account in somewhere options, uh, financial options. Are you going to do enter at nothing, later? Nothing, nothing. There's no, uh, what happens, uh, financial options involved on this one, like retainage. Uh, there is only in EBIS actually. And in Fusion, uh, we don't have to, what happens, uh, set up any financial accounting for this. No, I'm not sure about it. Uh, any finance guy is there. Fine. Anything has to be mentioned on the common options. Let us know. Go on and see. Since he has asked for it, now, we'll see. the common options has got any retainage account or not, I'm not sure about it. Because accounting part, I'm not that comfortable of this. No, actually, Nana, when you are going to uh, create any invoice in AP or lease, it will have to uh, store in some uh, account. So where will it? Yeah, will yeah, be? yeah. It may be, it may be. But uh, see, I'm not very sure about the accounting part now. Right? Uh, I'm not uh, very sure about the accounting part. So let us know. See whether the manage common options for payables and procurement is having this or not. Right? Let us know. Make a check. Now. Whether any retaining the account is already there or not. Normally, what happens in EBS, we will have the financial options will be having the retainage account. Okay, uh, it is not coming properly. Fine, we will now we'll go ahead and then complete. So, so go to the schedules. So click on schedules. So click on schedules. And then here you can now see the factory innovation. Why two lines have come out? Select it and then I will now delete it. Why two lines have come out? I don't know. The schedule is the only active schedule in the line. Fine, the deleting the uh, schedule will also delete the line. Fine. What exactly this? What do you mean by this? So click on yes now. Oh God. How come it has become two lines? I don't understand. So click on plus. Mm. Go there. So I will now say it's innovation. Go there. Is the miscellaneous category? Miscellaneous miscellaneous the one. Okay, see. You click on search. And the base amount is 20,000. Then you go there. So the requester is PRC 15 now, right? The requester is 15. Student, comma, PRC 15. Right? He's a requester. So last name, comma, first name, and go there. He's the person who is now in need of it. And then we have a charge account set for it, right? So he's a requester. And then you go to the schedule now. Go to the schedule. And then we'll now put the retaining over here. <clears throat> so we'll now go to the view, go to the columns, and then enable the retaining now, right? Retainage rate is already on now. So here we have to enter the retainage rate. <clears throat> Go there, click on it. And then I will now say 20% of the retainage. And then let me put the date. One of the date is a mandatory one. And I'll now put this date. That's it. So the PO is now created. So is it? So retainage rate is now 20. Then here in the lines region, everything is now complete. <clears throat> Got it now. Fine. We'll now save. So it is for 20,000 and then the org is 001 Seattle. So whichever org is going to perform, you have to put the appropriate org. And then the, the organization, the location you have to put, and then the org will be coming automatically. So click on save, and then I'm going to approve it now. So I will now take a copy of the note. I will now take, go to the notepad. Open it up. 
no, sir, whatever the line type you have selected, based on that, the retain edge will be selected, right? Retain edge type. What the line type is only fixed to prices and services. So that is retain edge. That's how the system identifies. No, no, no. System doesn't identify based upon the line type. Line type has got nothing to do with this. <clears throat> line type has got nothing to do. With this. And then here, if you go to the schedules and then uh, have a look at it, if I click on it, both the charge and variance account will be set to our account actually. Okay. Not no, no, no. The line type you are creating three-way receipt. The three-way option and receipt, or it is two-way with PO. It is a two-way PO. Fine, remember it is a two-way PO. Fine, so we'll now go on and first of all, we'll now make it as a two-way PO. Fine, we'll now make it as a two-way PO. You know, see this. It has to be a two-way PO. Fine. Automatically, it is a two-way PO before you now enable the amount-based one. So it is now becoming a two-way PO only. Had it been a quantity, then it can be a three. Or it will be what happens? It will be order than three-way. So right? three-way receipt actually. So since it is a, a quantity amount-based uh, line type, so it automatically sets it to two-way PO. Fine. You can even see the uh, charge account coming up. Fine. So six zero five four zero one twenty. That is the charge account you have seen. Fine. So if you go on and see that this one, this is the one six zero five one twenty. So that is exactly how much charge account. And then the variance account also will be same as far as uh, you know this thing is concerned. <clears throat> as far as you are, uh, uh, your fixed price and services concerned. If you go to the distribution, you can even see the variance also. You go to the distribution selector and click on the verification of another account. It will be showing what happens. The base charge account become the variance account also. For any expense item, expense thing, both of them are same. Only accrual is different actually. Accrual is different. So click on okay now. And remember, this accrual is an expense accrual and not your asset accrual actually. Right? The expense accrual is set at the manage mapping set of uh, what happens. Your purchasing accounting there will be mm -hmm. like business unit level accrual. Fine. That accrual. Mm -hmm. accrual. Mm -hmm. Please, please, you make. Enda, enda. Ready? Yeah. So, what? Please, please mute it. Nothing. If you don't, when uh, you are not speaking, please mute it. <clears throat> so click on okay. So that's it. Fine. Now we'll not take a copy of the number. No. Any doubts on the PO? So we already copied down. the PO number. So let us now go on the upper. It is a two-way PO. Remember, because it is a retail age, and so it is automatically set to fixed prices and services, and then it is an expense destination. And so the charge and variance account will be same, and then the accrual is again an expense accrual and not the asset accrual actually. Okay, and everything is now that we already seen all those things. Now, practice on submit. So we're going to submit the proposal. Can you please go to distribution? We are not here on that, please. In the distribution, you go there. <clears throat> go to place. Select it and then click on edit. Go to place. This is the view of distribution. This is an expense accrual. Point. It is an expense accrual. It is not asset accrual actually. Okay, 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 okay. The uh, charge and variance will be the same actually. So give a cancel now. <sighs> now let us now submit popular. So we are submitting this PO for approval. This retainage PO is now getting submitted for approval. So it also shows you the what's called the uh, PO name. No, right? None of the retainage PO. It's now getting submitted. So 164343 uh, must be getting approved. Now wait for approval. I want to check whether the, anybody has changed the thing or not. <laughs> Somebody might have changed the approvals. We'll go there, go to the manager orders, and then have a look at it. Not take copy. And then we'll see whether the PU is getting approved or not. So, order number. Paste it over here. Thank you. Search for it. it must be automatic, actually. Fine. If it is automatic, it will be getting approved automatically. We'll click on the pending approval. So, the 15th employee's uh, expense account has become the charge account, actually. Hmm, go back. So again, you have to wait for some time. You click on search now. This is open. It's not open. So it is not dead. Now we are going to create an invoice for twenty thousand dollars. You're not going to pay, make a payment. Now. The payment terms is immediate or whatever it is. Now. Let us now see. So somebody was asking something. Uh, you want to see the common option. Come on, you go there. The common options is having an account or not because I'm working on vision. Vision is fully set actually. So we don't know where, whether it's all there or not. So click on search now. So go to the manage common options. You'll now see when the retain age is there. Enables we have a retain age. You'll now see this now. Right? Go to the manage common options for payables and procurement and then you'll now populate our BU over here now. So we are working on US one business unit and then we are going to search for it now and then see whether any retain age account is set up. 
of course, there is absolutely required for your issuing uh, accounting of uh, So prepayment, all these things are fine uh, discount. Prepayment tax is working there. Liability expense, realize again loss. Oh, it is not having any retainage account over here. I don't know where exactly. So talk to the financials and then they will tell you the retainage account. It is a must actually. Retainage account. So it's there, right? Oh yeah, it's there. Yeah, 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 it's there. Yeah, exactly. It is there. Actually. The retainage account. Is click on what kind of account it is. It is the asset or liability. You want to see two two is basically liability. Anything two is liability. Liability. Yeah. Liability. Okay, Nana. No, no. It's a liability. And retainage is a liability. So retainage is there actually. In EBS also we have it, and then here also we have. It. Now we'll now go there and then create a what happens invoice and payments actually. Uh, Raja, is there any other uh, prerequisite setup? Nothing. Nothing. No, no other no, prerequisite no. is there. Fine. No other thing. Only thing is the account. The accounting part. The account is there. As far as PO is concerned, no other setup actually. No other setup is there. Fine. So click on the home icon and then we'll go to the payables and then we'll create an invoice for this PO. No. So go there. Go to the payables and then we'll create an invoice. This is working or not? This screen is locked. So we will go there. The no trader. What's it called? Go there. We'll create an invoice. So go to this place and then click on create invoice. So click on create invoice. You're not going to get an invoice. So go there, identify being, you know, paste it and then give a tap. So you can even see on the suppliers portal, the purchase order number. You go to the suppliers portal and then have the purchase orders approved means what automatically it will be communicated to you. Go to the manage orders and then have a look now. So on the main uh, uh, task, this thing, fine. infolets, we will not see whether anything has come over here or not. Infolets may also show you that your purchase order combined, there's one. So schedules, audio, or today, fine, you know, have a look Requiring attention is not showing us that it's called in the infolet area on the supply portal. So we'll see what exactly is the message now. Fine. Orders opened is one. Fine. That is also showing you there is an activity for you. Another PO purchase amount. Uh, PO purchase amount is uh, 20,000 US dollars. And there's also transaction reports is also showing. So it requires an attention for us now. Fine. I don't know what sort of attention is required now. Fine. So you know, see. So it's a manager orders. So supplier is able to see now. Fine. So it shows you the order now. Fine. It shows you the order. The order copy is now shown to you on the on the infolet, and then you can also see that in the what's called the manager orders. Right? Go to the manager orders, you can even see this on the supply. Supplier can very well log in and then you can now look at everything. So if you can search now, you can see all the orders which has come to him now. <clears throat> so orders you can see. Now we are now in the process of what creating a what's called a this thing. I will now go back again here. Now. I now put the uh, inventory. I know putting it. I will now put a number as what uh, I will now put against what happens. 1005 is the number I'm putting in. I'm the amount is 20,000. But 20,000 is not correct because it has to be along with the taxes actually. So since I don't know, I can even do it later on. Now I'm going to obtain the line level distribution by matching it. So once when I match it, it's amount based, I'm going to perform a match. So once when I perform a match, the accrual gets relieved. Actually. Click on it. I'm not going to make a payment. 20,000. So click on it. No, is match level is ordered, and then the entire amount is available because it is a two way PO. Had it been a three way, you had to wait for the what's called the result actually. And then go there. So select it, and then the total amount will be coming over. This is the amount which I'm going to make a payment of. That. So click on apply, and then click on OK by which the distribution gets created. So the distribution will be getting created. You give a save. Now, if you look at the distribution very closely, you can now see that this distribution will be having what the retainage also. Go that one. I will give a save. Okay? No save. If you go to the click on the distribution, it will be having a 20% retainage. Click on the distribution, it will be having a retainage of 20%. The 20% retainage will be there. So, one is the item price of 10, and then the retainage of 4,000 is also there. <clears throat> Fine. The total amount. So, remaining amount is zero for payment, actually. So, the 20,000, 20%, 4,000 US dollars are retained, actually. And give a cancel. Give a cancel. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to validate the invoice. Okay? So, it is not validate. Put the invoice and then validate the invoice. <clears throat> We are going to validate the invoice. <laughs> so this time I'm going to make a payment of only 16,000 and not 20,000 actually. I'm going to validate it. So it needs a validation. Fine, click on it. I'll see what exactly the problem is. So go there. It says line variance is there. Fine. System hold is there. Fine, needs validation. Approval is required. It says approval is also required. First of all, we'll now approve it. No, we'll force approve it now. Fine. We'll now force approve it. We'll go there. So click on close now. Fine. Go to the invoice actions and then we'll now approve and then we'll now force approve it. This auction is not available in B or remover. Whereas if you set up an approval here, the invoice, the payables clerk can very well force approval actually. But that is not possible in, in, in procurement actually. That is not possible. He is now forcing the approval. 
So invoice approvals are exactly similar to what we have in uh, payables uh, purchasing approval, but it is very complex. Setting up is very, very complex. And Abhay has already told us. Now, let us now go there and then give a validate number. You know, see, the approval required would have been gone at least. The approval required would have gone now. So go to the needs revaluation. You can now see the approval. You can now see manually approved. Accounting is unaccounted, uh, is unpaid. And then still we have a line variance. Line variance is already the hold is up late under that point. So because the system has added the taxes actually, and the header has to include the taxes actually under that point. Go there. So the total amount, whatever is coming, is what 21 520 is the total, including taxes. So 21 520 is the one. And then now we'll now save it and then we'll again validate it. So it is along with the taxes actually. That is what you mean. So you can now see in the bottom retainage of 4000 is also recorded there. Out of 20,000, retain the 4,000 is also recorded. So the taxes is 1,520. Uh, 1, and then here, what happens? The number of actions are again validated. So once when you validate it, they can now see <coughs> that it is validated. If you click on the validation, if it is now validated, you know, like, it, is a, it is a resubmitted. Okay, is again asking me to resubmit for approval. No, fine. So it is preferable that what happens? You resubmit it. And that is the one small error which is coming up. No, fine. So better reason, right? The payment is unpaid actually. So when such a thing comes, what happens? You go there, click on approval, account, approval, and then force approval because somebody has sent the approvals also here. Now, force approvals. So go there, click on it. I did not have, click on it, validation, and then I do not have the yellow mark at all. Right? No yellow marks, yes, fantastic. Right? Manually approved. Right? Now we'll now make a payment of this now. Right? We'll see about how much. So my invoice number is what? 1005. I'm going to make a payment. I will now go to the payables and then make a payment. Thank you on the payment. And then I will now create a payment for this for the invoice 1005. So go there, click on it, we'll now create a payment. We are now going to issue a check to the supplier now. Click on create payment. I go to the payments and then I'm now going to click on create payment. And then here, uh, the plus symbol will come only when you fill up everything on this area now. Right? Only this, then only what happens you create right? Business unit is what you want. So you have to fill up everything. Then only the plus symbol on the bottom invoices today will be coming. So supplier or party is what? J10. <clears throat> and then go there. And then we'll now pop it. Supply said everything is coming for that. So you pay the distribution bank account. Fine, I will not say Bank of America will not choose it now. BOFA, I'm going to choose it. And then go the payment checkers. Fine, and the payment process profile we'll go down and then drop it down. We'll not make it a standard one. Fine, standard is that excellent one. Standard check. We'll not go to it down. So the remit account will be coming and drop it down. <clears throat> it is not a what happens. This account is not configured now, but it's not a mandatory one. So payment document. Fine, the payment document will be having a this thing now. Fine. It will be having uh, one check along with the what happens is section advice fine over So everything is not done, then the plus symbol is coming. Now, what is mean by remit to account? Huh? Remit, remit to account, account is uh, his account, I think. I think supplier's account. Uh, hey, uh, Gajabadi, it is a supplier's account, isn't it? Supplier's bank account, I think. I'm not sure about yeah. it. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, it's a supplier's bank account. If you configure it, it should be correct. Right? The supplier's bank account is not configured. The plus symbol has come once when you fill up everything. In the meantime, what happens? You can go there. You can now see that the invoice is also created. I am now in the suppliers login now. We can now see the invoices being created. In the bottom, what happens? You can now see uh, manage invoices, view invoices. If you click on the view invoices, supplier is now seeing the invoice has been communicated to you. Click on search. The invoice number is 1005. Uh, he may not be knowing the invoice number. So he may be querying on some other field actually. Supplier is like, so we got the invoice number. You know, see 21,520. The supplier is seeing the invoice actually. Supplier is having a look at the invoice. <clears throat> you can have a full look at the invoice. Right? The invoice, all the taxes, everything, whatever he has created, everything is now shown over here you know, in the place along with other information. On this. The total amount is 21,520. Right? Remaining amount is what? This one, fine, go there. So there is nothing to invoice at all. <clears throat> fine, 21,520. So total due. Fine, out of which they are now going to. Uh, Keep 4,000 with them and then uh, they will be releasing, we will be releasing only 17,500. So 4,000 will be kept as a check. So you're going to do And remember, no one else for us. Go there, click on that. Now he's able to see. Now we'll now come back to our area and then we'll now perform the payment. Everything is there. We'll now create what happens a plus. So once we do it, whatever invoices which are ready for payment will be coming on it. You're going to get an invoice payment. So invoice, you cannot see it's already coming. Select it and then click on apply. And then click on OK. And that's it. The check gets created. The check gets created. And then it is now printed based upon the payment process profile, actually. Right? The payment document. Based upon this payment uh, document profile, it will be getting printed. So go there. You can now see that this is the amount. So 1005 is the one. 
and then you have got a number for this payment also i don't know what to see it now idalle done off angle click on save and then uh, save and close save and close when click on save and close there is a payment number will be associated with it and the uh, uh, invoice number is coming it is there a 3820 payment document number ah yeah yeah the payment document number is a 3820 yeah very good 3820 thank you for saving close it is not done. now we can see the payment document number in our invoice it was initially unpaid and then we can now very well see this one okay one more question the 4000 system is getting another invoice which one chen for the 4000 dollar for the retainage amount yeah yeah that we are going to okay. So click on save now. You cannot uh, lock the record because it's already locked by another system. So I cancel and then re-query. Nana, one question. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know the invoice has been created, and uh, uh, I just want to uh, discuss one scenario. We did not like the quality, yeah. and uh, we want to cancel the purchase order, right? So we yeah. are not happy with the supplier. So are we able to do that? I don't know whether you can do. We'll not try enough. Thank you, Rajkumar. So yet yeah, no, it may happen, right? Uh, we do not yeah, like the course, yeah, quality yeah. or something like that. Not sure. Let us know. Can that has been done before uh, your payment? No, fine. It's all paid actually. Select and then click on edit. No, fine. It's already paid now. <clears throat> This is the one. Yes, sir. Validated. It is validated. It is already paid now. So it is uh, validated, and then uh, payment is this much. No, fine. This much of a payment is already made actually. So at this stage, if you cancel, what will happen? I don't know. Will no cancel be seen? Let me come complete everything. The retainage also will complete. Will not cancel. Not allowed. System will not allow because the payment is already done. Maybe, maybe we will not see this. Okay. So we will not have a look at it also. So it is unaccounted. Accounting is not done. Okay. The remaining everything is there. The payment is not made also. So it is not fully paid. Now we are now going to release what happens the uh, the retainage. Now we are decided to release. So we will not pay another invoice. How can we check that this much amount is pending? How can we check this? This amount is pending before. Yeah, we have already seen on the payments area. Right? This area it is only shown there. Have you seen it? No, no. You know, as a layman, because since you are working right now, but so as the here also you can see this now again. One thousand five. This is the one. Um, ah, uh, what I was unpaid amount. It is now will become a paid amount now. Right? If you give a search now, fine, you get paid amount. So four thousand is pending. Supplier also you can see very well. So unpaid amount is nothing. Everything is paid against this payment document number. Fine, click on it now. You can now see how much is retained against this. You can very well see one three eight two zero. We go that click on it. They are now showing you fully paid. It is now saying you, and then twenty one thousand five hundred is fully paid. But there is a retainage. Where to see this retainage? Yeah. If you click any hyperlink, is not there. So how the supplier can see? Is a negotiable because the check has been issued to him. It is a negotiable instrument. He may be able to see the retainage also there, somewhere. But click on that now. Three eight two zero is one. So let us now go there in the payment area. Maybe okay. I am now searching on the invoices now. Fine. So let me go on and see on the payment area. I will not see what's called a uh, view the payments. So go there. So negotiation, go there. So where is the invoices? So view payments. Fine. Click on the view payments and then see three eight two zero is the one. If you don't know the payment number, fine. Hello. Give us search or blank search or supply is required. Supply is required. He has only logged in. Fine. He is asking for the supply and need. Supply is only logged in. Sub underscore one. Fine. 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 And then click on search. So one of them is a mandatory one. So it has to show. Right? If you click on this now, fine. He has been paid amount is this much, and then if you click on the three eight two zero, you know, see that the details are available or not. It shows you only the invoice number. Ah, uh, yeah. It shows you paid amount and the invoice amount. The difference is retainage, but retainage करके कहीं पे लिखता नहीं है. हाँ, it may be available somewhere now. Fine, go back to it. You see anything? Any retained amounts are there? Fine. View invoice, view payments, all these things are there. And then, if you click on the uh, requiring attention, what exactly? Orders pending payments is one now. Fine invoice amount. I go there. PO amount is this again. Which invoice amount is this now? Invoice please very much. That's okay. Go there. Payments. Everything is not showing us hyperlink. The required attention is now coming up. Fine. It may even show you. But somebody tell us about how to see how the supplier can see in his login the retainage. It shows you here only. So retainage now here it is showing. See, he sees this, he is able to see. This. You click on the view details, it now shows you how much is the retainage. So, so it shows this now. So it shows you this thing validated, validated thing. The retainage amount is for us. So at least on that area, on the requiring attention area, we are able to see the retainage actually. Now let us now release this retainage. Now go there, click on it. Now go there, click on it. We will now create another invoice for releasing the retainage. So the same PO number we are going to put it on the table. 
and then I'm not going to make 1006 now. So the amount is what? 1006. And then this will be 4000 now. 4000. I can even partially release also, fine, not necessarily. The type is a reading engine invoice. So it is a retain age release. Previously, we created a standard invoice. Now we are going to what? Create a retain age release invoice. So click on it. And then here you drop it down and then choose retain age release by invoice lines. The lines and then map it, match it. So you are going to match it based upon the retain age release by invoice lines. And then click on match. You'll be getting the match. The amount match will be coming. So how much is it ready for? Where you have gone to this, the create invoice screen. You want to do it again? I will not go there. Click on it. I will not go to the create invoice now. When I'm not getting invoice on this. Okay. So I will not populate the people. I'm going to tap now. So I'm putting everything. I will not put the number as 1007 because six might have got locked. Actually. I'm not sure about it. 4000. And then the type I'm going to change. The type I'm going to change it as what? Retain it. That is the only change. Previously, it was a standard one. Now I'm not changing it to retain it. Please. Do you get I drop it down and then make it as a retailage release invoice. Retailage release by invoice lines and then click on go. And then we'll be coming over here. <clears throat> the invoice has the same supplier invoice and everything. <laughs> because 1006 is made like that. No, fine. We have just stopped it. Fine. Click on continue. Fine. Doesn't matter. Okay. Continue. Click on continue. You know that. Now it is all come. No, fine. So it's not accepting it at all. No, God. It is not doing it. So we only have to manually, what happens, uh, do the thing because the distribution is not created. Because we started and then we stopped it, if I cancel it, let us now query the, what's called 1006 itself. Go that no query the 1006, go to the managing invoice. Because invoice has got created actually. If I go to the managing invoice in 1006, let me query it now. So invoice number is what? 1006, tab. So click on search. So 1006 is coming, fine. You select and then click on edit. Click on edit. So what is everything is that I click on it? I will not go and then again match it. Nothing on it. I know you have match. You will see whether it comes along. Yeah, it's coming. So since the invoice has started, it is not allowing another invoice to be created for the same parameter. Now select it and then click on release. Now. And you release it. So that we can even release partially also, depending upon your wish. Thousand, two thousand, three thousand, everything can also be done. Right? So partial also can be released. I am not releasing the full amount. Click on release now. I am not releasing the full retaining yet. So now the distribution is now created. So click on save now, and then we will now go for approval as well as what happens, we go there. And then, you know, save it. So the total amount is what total amount is coming, but the calculation of tax is not done. So let us now calculate the taxes. Now. And taxes is not yet calculated, we'll go there. So go to the invoice, and then we will now calculate tax. And click on tax calculation, you know, calculating it. So then you'll be getting the full amount, you know, and then 4380 is the amount now, fine, 43, tax is 380. So 4380 is the one. You make a change to 4380. 4380, so what and then give a save now. And then we'll not approve it also. I will not go to the approvals also. Force approval, I'll not do it now. Force approval, I'm not doing it now. And then I will not validate. When everything is not completed, I'm going to validate. So we're validating it. So it's not validated. Fine, you want it. You will not see everything is not done. So it's unpaid and that's not fine. So it is 1006 is the one. You go to the payment and then here, what happens? You don't create a payment for 1006. So click on pay payment. And then we're doing it. And the retail age release actually. The supplier party. Once when you complete everything, then only the plus symbol will be enabled. Otherwise, it will not be enabled. A big payment. So this person is a Bank of America. Bank of America. And then the payment method. Check actually payment process profile. And then choose the standard one. So this is all we will be fully taught in a, what's called your uh, uh, payable training actually, fine. and then a payment document, right? which document you're going to have. No so the moment I put it, you can now see the plus symbol coming up. Right. The plus symbol will be coming. So it's coming back. And then for 1006, I'm going to make it. Up. So here, 1006 is already available. Whatever is available for payment, it will now show in the bottom automatically. So the retaining is also released. Really so everything is not done. I click on save and close by which it gets paid actually. The check will be disbursed by post to the supplier. So, so A21 for three years has been created. Now you go there, click on this now, fine with that. So I will now go and then whatever the RC is unpaid now, fine for not. Uh, I will not, there is no refresh button at all. Okay? We had to cancel and then come back and then see 1600. Save and close now. And now cancel and then query for that. Oh, you are locked, you cannot save it out. So the record is locked. I cancel and then come back. 
do that. So you will now make a search on this now fine and then re-query it actually. So here it's now saying validated only. And click on search again. And then afterwards you select it and then click on edit now. I click on edit, then you can see this. Click on edit. You can also you go to the go to the validated, it will not be paid actually. It will not paid. Find the paid information also. Now you wanted to cancel, you will not see whether it allows the cancellation or not. I'm not sure about it. So I don't know that. So any other doubts on this now? Fine. It's not fully paid. So the retainage amount is nothing. And everything is not released actually. And even in part release also. Cancel it. Go there. So click on the home and then let us know. Go to what? The purchase order and then try to cancel the order. You will see what happens. It's fully paid. You go to the procurement and then you are asking for the purchase orders. <coughs> Somebody was asking this question. They wanted to cancel before payment, isn't it? That is what their idea is, I think, probably. Nana, this yeah. is standard. You have to cancel the invoice after that. You can cancel the PO. If the invoice is already paid, it's already paid. Now, fine, it will be paid. And so, you cannot cancel it. Yeah, we cannot. We'll now see whether it is allowing a cancellation. Select it. And then go to actions. And then let us know what happens. Uh, delete is only there. Fine. Uh, reopen is there. So, there is no such cancel. Fine. Cancel doc. I will now go to the cancel doc one and then try now. Select the link under. So I will say test cancel. No, no, you can close this uh, PO, but you cannot cancel it. Okay. And click on okay now. We'll see what are the messages now coming up. Okay. Yeah, given a reason now. We will see. Fine. You cannot cancel the record because invoiced or delivered distribution exists actually. That means what? If it is invoiced also, you cannot cancel. You cannot cancel this record because invoiced or received schedules exist. <coughs> there is no receiving and delivering because it's two APO. But it is invoiced actually. So because of it, it will not allow you to cancel. But somebody says that before invoicing, I think probably you can very well cancel. If you are not invoiced, it, we can very well cancel. Got it? So this completes the retainage and release. Any other doubts on this now? No, no, no. Thanks, no, no. Got it. Yeah. Any other doubts for anybody? No, no, no. Good, good, good. <clears throat> so only the re the Common options has got a retainage account there for accounting purposes. Right? So that will take care of the accounting. And then we will now meet at 5.30 for our procurement contracts actually. Fine, procurement contracts. So those who have not joined this course also, they are welcome to join also. Right? They can also have a look at, it is now going, already two sessions are completed. Then we'll be seeing the third session at 5.30 p.m. on procurement contracts. Any other doubts? No answer. It was good. Thanks. Bye for now. And then we'll meet at 5 30 p.m. Another 45 minutes time you're going to meet. Thanks, man. Thank you, Nana. Let's talk later.